Hello, my name is Jürgen Schauber and I am with the Department of Dermatology and Allergy at the Ludwigs Maximilians University in Munich, Germany. And today I would like to introduce you to recent advances in the pathophysiology of a chronic inflammatory skin disease called rosacea. Now, rosacea, as you all know, is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the skin, mainly affecting the central portions of the face. It's characterized by flushing, erythema, teleangiectasias, and patients suffer from episodes of disease exacerbation. And those disease exacerbations cause swelling, papules, pustules, and sometimes nodules. Rosacea's clinical classification uh, is different stages. First, there is a pre-rosacea condition with episodic erythema or blushing. Stage 1 rosacea, um, the patients have persistent to moderate erythema with scattered teleangiectasias. In stage 2, persistent erythema, numerous teleangiectasias, papules and pustules might be seen. Stage 3 rosacea, which is the most severe, is characterized by persistent deep erythema, dense tail angiectasias, papules, pustules and nodules with variable edema. Now the path pathophysiology of rosacea is not fully understood and I would like to take the next couple of minutes to introduce to you existing hypotheses. I would like to talk about the role of demodex mites. Then I will go on and talk about current hypotheses and the role of the innate immunity and especially the role of cathelicidin and proteases in the course of rosacea. Also in the end of the presentation I will go through some uh, slides showing possible implications for therapy. Now rosacea and demodex mites. Demodex mites are ubiquitous. They are part of the normal skin fauna and the numbers of demodex mites on the skin rise with age, especially when sebaceous glands proliferate. Men have more demodex mites on the skin than women, and in rosacea patients you find specific IgG against demodex, which you find not in healthy controls. Now there is more evidence for a pathogenic role of demodex mites in rosacea. Here you see that rosacea patients in 84% of all cases show demodex mites on the skin and in healthy controls, in acne controls and also in lupus patients you rarely see demodex mites. There is other evidence for a pathogenic role of demodex mites in rosacea too. For example, treatments that reduce demodex on the skin also reduce skin inflammation. Demodex can be a vector for bacteria which associate with the course of rosacea. Also, demodex mites density increases with steroid use and the use of steroids can cause flares of inflammation in rosacea. And rosacea in the absence of demodex mites is really rare. So given the current data, demodex is a risk factor and a trigger of inflammation in rosacea, but probably not the cause. Now I will come to a novel hypothesis and that is that rosacea is associated with disturbed innate immune function in the skin. In order to do so, I would like to introduce you to you the concept of antimicrobial peptides. I will then talk about cathelicidin antimicrobial peptides. I will tell you something about their functions and then I will go on and show you that cathelicidin might play a role in the pathogenesis of rosacea. Now from the moment of our birth, we are colonized by many pathogens or microbes, among those bacteria, viruses and fungi. However, still we are rarely infected. Those bacteria, viruses and fungi can cause a very distinct uh, skin infection. Here you see some examples. Streptococci, for example, can cause folliculitis, herpes simplex can, is caused by the herpes virus and fungi can cause infections such as here. Malassezia furfur. As mentioned, uh, healthy skin is rarely infected and that is because we have a very efficient innate immune barrier in our skin and one pillar of that innate immune barrier is the family or the, the concept of antimicrobial peptides. Those antimicrobial peptides act as defense molecules and they, they are expressed in different layers in our skin. 
The first layer comes in sweat, then those antimicrobial peptides are expressed in keratinocytes. Neutrophil, uh, neutrophilic cells transport antimicrobial peptides to sites of infection and also mast cells express those antimicrobial peptides which can act as endogenous antibiotics. Now there are several um, proteins with antimicrobial function in the skin, however there is only one that has been conclusively shown to be relevant also in vivo. And you see here on this slide a model uh, with a um, genetically modified mouse which lacks one of those peptides called cathelicidin. On the left row you see a um, wild type mouse that has cathelicidin. On the upper, uh, in, the upper in the lower um, row you see a mouse that has no cathelicidin and both mice have been injected with streptococcus bacteria to cause skin infection. After seven days you see that the mouse that has cathelicidin completely clears and heals the infection while the mouse that has no cathelicidin develops deep ulcerating skin infection. And also when you culture the, bacteria, or the skin lesion you will see that the wild type mouse with cathelicidin does completely clear any bacteria in the wound but mice that have no cathelicidin they show a heavy load of bacteria in the skin infection. So that shows that uh, cathelicidin acts as an endogenous antibiotic also in vivo. Now humans only possess one cathelicidin gene which translates into one inactive propeptide. That peptide has to be activated by proteases and LR37 is the first peptide that is generated and which is considered to be the major antibiotic functioning uh, peptide. LR37 however can be processed to smaller peptides too and those small, smaller peptides have differing functions such as they induce angiogenesis, they can re, uh, induce the release of cytokines or chemokines from immune cells or resident cells, they can also induce chemotaxis. So given the fact that those peptides are not only serving as antibiotics but also as immune modulators, one, ha one has introduced the term alarmins for those peptides because they have alarming functions. So the question is now of course what is the role of cathelicidin in inflammatory skin diseases and especially now in the pathophysiology of rosacea. Interestingly while healthy skin which is shown on the right side only expresses uh, little amounts of cathelicidin peptide the expression of cathelicidin in rosacea is highly induced. You can see that in the, on that immune histochemistry, but you can also see that in the lower panel uh, in a more quantitative uh, way. And not, not only that cathelicidin is overexpressed in the skin of rosacea patients, also processing of the peptide is apparently uh, false. Um, you can see here an HPLC um, analysis of skin biopsies from rosacea patients and you see a whole different pattern of small antimicrobial or cathelicidin peptides compared to normal. And why is that uh, the cathelicidin peptides are processed falsely? And this is because uh, in the skin in rosacea also the expression of the proteases that process cathelicidin is induced. And you can see on this slide uh, in the upper row the cathelicidin is induced and also the um, calicranes, which is one family of the proteases that pro process cathelicidin in the skin, is induced, while in the normal um, skin the expression is really low. And even more interestingly, when you take that falsely processed cathelicidin peptides that you find in rosacea patients and inject those into mice, you will see that uh, these mice develop teleangiectasias inflammation and erythema at the site of infection, all features that you also see in rosacea. Controlled peptide injection, however, does not cause any inflammation. So the current model of cathelicidin dysfunction in rosacea pathophysiology is shown on this slide. In normal skin you have the cathelicidin precursor, you have normal processing, you have the LR37 peptide which serves chemotactically, antimicrobially and, and, and uh, also on angiogenesis which gives you an effective innate immune defense barrier. In rosacea you have the cathelicidin precursor, you have increased protease activity, 
you will have L37 and variant peptides. Those will exert pro-inflammatory activities, which results in chronic inflammation. Now the question, of course, is how is cathelicidin expression in skin regulated? We have um, tested a, an abundant um, uh, array of different stimulators on keratinocytes in vitro and found that only vitamin D was able to induce cathelicidin in human keratinocytes. So this gives rise to another hypothesis and that is UV light, which can be a trigger in rosacea, does not only cause infiltration of inflammatory cells such as neutrophils and gives rise to the generation of reactive oxy oxygen species and oxidative stress, but also induces the generation of vitamin D, the induction of cathelicidin, and all that together leads to protease activation, collagen breakdown, inflammation and angiogenesis, everything of that observed in rosacea. How could now Demodex, which I named in the beginning of the talk, play a role in this system? Well, one of the hypotheses is that Demodex could activate immune receptors in the skin in rosacea, which could induce cathelicidin expression, and cathelicidin again would induce inflammation. However, another hypothesis is also that decreased local antimicrobial defense could also lead to an increased growth of Demodex mites on the skin and that could also explain why rosacea patients have more demodex mites. Also the question of course, do current therapies work through those models? And yes, there are some indications. For example, tetracyclines inhibit proteases in the skin and also inhibit collagen breakdown and po possibly they could also inhibit cathelicidin processing. Another drug that is uh, used in rosacea treatment is acylic acid. And acylic acid has been shown to decrease cathelicidin peptide and protease activity in human keratinocytes and also decrease skin protease activity in mice and thereby maybe also inhibit cathelicidin processing. So finally I, want to, I would like to show you one slide summarizing all those mechanisms. The current model for rosacea pathophysiology um, is shown here and involves environmental triggers such as UV light, sun exposure, heat, hormones, on demodex mites or other microbes and they are all sensed by um, sensors or receptors in the skin such as the uh, toll-like -like receptors which leads to induction of effector molecules such as cathelicidin, activation of proteases, generation of reactive oxygen species and also the release of cytokines and chemokines and all that, those have as a consequence that vascular changes appear, collagen is degenerated and an inflammatory infiltrate with neutrophils is seen and might explain the pathophysiology of rosacea. Thank you very much.